Frederick Bruce Thomas was his full name. He was unusual even just in the United States because he was born in the Deep South in Mississippi. His parents had been slaves. And before American blacks started moving north, which they did mostly after the First World War, he moved north in 1890. He went to Chicago first. There were very few black people in Chicago. Then he went to Brooklyn after that. There were also very few black people in the New York area in those days. For a young black man like him, uh, the possibilities to do something for a living were very limited. He was a waiter and he was a valet to a well-known and rich businessman in Brooklyn. And he became a very polished and successful, very gentlemanly man. He was also very good looking. And he was very good at what he did. And then he did something even more extraordinary because he decided to go to Europe, to London specifically, to learn to sing because his teacher in New York suggested that that's the place he would be able to study without having to deal with the kind of racial problems that he had to face in New York. It didn't work out. He couldn't um, work for his um, fees, which is what he wanted to do, to pay his way through school by working. And so he reverted to the one skill he had, which was as a waiter. He worked for the next six years as a waiter in Europe. He worked in France, in Germany, in Monte Carlo, in northern Italy. He learned French fluently. He apparently went to St. Petersburg as the servant of a rich man. He liked Russia. He went to Odessa and to Moscow, and he decided to stay in Moscow, and that's where the rest of his life played out. From the time that he arrived in London in the fall of 1894, for the next two decades until he left Russia, he encountered no um, racist attitudes from anyone except American diplomats who were in Europe, in Western Europe and in Russia, and from American tourists. Because Americans, when they went abroad in those days, took in their luggage their racial attitudes from home. There are rumors about this and not entirely verifiable reports that when Thomas, at the very end of 18... 98 was working as a servant in the fanciest hotel in uh, Monte Carlo that he was befriended by a visiting Russian Grand Duke which is quite possible because Russian Grand Dukes are notorious for uh, spending happy times and the Empire's money in various European hotspots but once he saw Moscow he obviously liked it because that's the one place where he chose to live longer than any other place he ever lived, except for the family farm in Mississippi. Unlike virtually all Western European countries, Russia never attempted to colonize Africa. And unlike all of the countries virtually in North and South America, the Russians never tried to enslave black people. They enslaved their own peasantry by transforming them into serfs. So the status of blacks in Russia was unique in that regard. Moscow was the most quintessentially Russian city. Um, contemporary tourist guides from that period of time, written for English and American readers, all say the same thing. If you go to Russia and you want to see the real Russia, only Moscow. And so Thomas chose this place. Moscow was also a racially quite mixed city because Russia was a multi-ethnic empire so that a black man uh, from the United States like Thomas who statistically was extremely rare in Moscow did not in fact stand out against the background of the variability of the ethnic types. So he was able to start working in restaurants. He was very good at what he did. I think he was probably even better than the native waiters were because he had to go through a much tougher school in the United States where there were constant reminders of his lowly position as a black man. And what reports have survived do indicate that he was extraordinarily smooth, gracious, had a very winning manner, was a very successful performer on a restaurant stage because a really good waiter has to perform as well. 
And so what he wound up doing is rising in the ranks. He became a captain of waiters, a maître d'hôtel, and he eventually wound up being an assistant to Alexei Sudakov, who was the owner of possibly the most famous and certainly one of the most famous restaurants in pre-revolutionary Russia, Yar in Moscow. Yar was a place to which Grand Dukes came when they visited from Petersburg. The notorious uh, Grigory Rasputin came to Yar and carried on there. But Moscow was famous for its traditional old-styled merchant class. And the merchants loved to indulge their broad Russian nature, as they used to think of it. Anyway, Thomas was very good at dealing with them. And he made enough money so that with partners they could invest it uh, in a place of their own. And that's how he started on his fast track to uh, fame and fortune in Moscow. There were three women in his life, um, at one point two concurrently. His first wife was a Baltic German of very humble uh, origins. Uh, his second wife was a, a better educated Baltic German woman. But simultaneously with that, he had an affair with a beautiful young German performer uh, in variety uh, shows. She was a singer and dancer, and she became the love of his life, and he spent the rest of his life with her. He went from being a waiter to being a head waiter to becoming the owner of one place to becoming the owner of two places. When during the war prohibition was announced in Russia, and this was a half dozen years or so before it became law in the United States, and he made money hand over fist, like every other entrepreneur of that sort in Moscow. So Thomas's personal situation is constantly improving until the revolution of October 1917. The Bolsheviks put an end to all of this. And once they had physically taken control of Moscow, they began to dismantle systematically most of the features of czarist and provisional governmental life, which included taking away a lot of private property. Thomas had by that point become uh, the owner of uh, investment properties in Moscow. All of that was taken away from him. He managed to get his family out of Moscow um, early in 1918, but he wasn't allowed to leave himself. And so it took him a while and it took some trickery on his part to get out of Moscow and to join his family in Odessa. The Bolsheviks approached Odessa and took Odessa in the beginning of April 1919. And there was a badly mismanaged evacuation that occurred that allowed certain thousands of the people who were in Odessa to escape the Bolsheviks across the Black Sea to Constantinople. He lands in a completely foreign culture. It's not a Western society. And he starts from scratch. So he opened up a place within a couple of months of arriving on a shoestring, got into terrible debt, which caused all kinds of complications for him later, and became the toast of Constantinople overnight. What is striking about Frederick Thomas is that he was very hard-nosed and practical, but he had an imagination and he had a belief in himself his life path is completely unique. There is nobody else like him with his background who went through something such as he did. 